Hey everybody, welcome! Ronald Nessie here from Rock and Roll Heaven right outside of Chicago at the Arcata Theater in St. Charles, Illinois. Hanging and banging our episode number 48 with my brothers Carmine and Vinny. We'll bring him right to the stage because we've got so much going on and I got all dressed up for him. And I don't know, I'm going to bring Carmine on first. Uh, the legend, Vanilla Fudge, Chef Beck, Rod Stewart, <laughs> great hair. Uh, lo I love the look. <laughs> I love the look. What made you go? Uh, you got a little salt and pepper going for over last week. Yeah, you had the Bob just, Barker look last week. Last week, Bob Barker. This week, I'm uh, Pepe else. Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> and next week, next time, I'll have a little more. I'm, I, you know, this is what I wanted anyway. I wanted it kind of looking halfway white. But you look great. I mean, before with the purple, you look great. So you, you've got that know, look. Dude, You're one of those so guys hard. that are better. So hard to do every week. Every four weeks, I have to be in the hair salon four or five hours. I know. I'm with you. I you realize I you realize how much how much polish this takes every week. I, I got to buff I it out. It's <laughs> tell me about it. I mean, hey, I'm getting uh, there. I'm getting there. I got my forehead showing for the first time in forty years. What do you mean you're getting there? You're like you know you're you're not 21. This is it. But you got there. That's it. Yeah, I'm, you I'm know, here. that's it. I'm here. Hey, I'm here. let's bring little brother because I know he's going to throw some shots at me. Let's just get it out of the way. Yeah. He's like, um, <laughs> yeah, here it comes. Right, yeah, listen. I want two dozen of those leopard jackets and some <laughs> gunolis, please. And gunolis. <laughs> large and extra large. Thank you. <laughs> and some, gun some gunolis. <laughs> some gunolis. Oh, so funny. So okay, here. where'd that where'd the jacket come from? Oh my god. So, <laughs> it's legit. It's a jacket. See, you understand when I go on stage, you know, I, I do that's that's how I kind of I dress a little bit, because we're talking about 70s, 80s, 60s, and I've got all these, you know, kind of looks. And I thought I wear the Queen shirt because we've got the Queens of Noise, someone from the Queens of Noise on tonight. And you know, Katie's definitely Uh oh. How do it make sense? Don't you think? It's it's the jacket. <laughs> it's you're also bouncing a little bit. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, there I don't know what's going jacket, on here. But, but yeah. so I'm, I I need, is it a thumbs up or thumbs down? Yeah, I like it. I like it. I mean, Katie so likes you really? it. So. Like it's sideways. <laughs> Katie likes it. Well, that's that's the bottom. She she did like it. We got a great show tonight, guys. I love this thing. You know, there needs to be more females on this show. There really, really needs to be. I mean, you know, we, there's so many women of rock and roll, and we had Lita on. We've had some on, but not enough. So we got to get going on that because why tonight, is that, Ron? What happened? Because let me tell you something. <laughs> because there's a <laughs> lot of females in rock and roll. It's not Man. all about Black Sabbath and Vanilla Fudge. Maybe if you put that jacket on more often, we'll get more female. I think you know? so. Uh, or, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, look, I put the jacket on, and look what we have tonight. We have two fabulous ladies. Yeah. We have Katie Darrell from MTV, from TMZ, and now from Axis TV. Let's bring her to our microphone because there's so much to talk about with this. And like I said, she's one of my heroes, too. Hi, Katie. Katie Darrell. Katie. I like the jacket, guys. I'm team See? jacket. I love her. I love her. Katie, thank you for joining no, us that's here. That's because you're the host and she's a host. So you're, you're getting on real good this. with her. You got to have some flair, all right? I mean, in this world of rock and roll, everyone's dressing in black. Let's snazz it up right. a little bit, all yeah, right? Yeah, Vinny. But I, I got, I, no, I got gray. This is a bit of a oh, gray okay. shade. Oh, okay, you got gray. You got gray. All right. I, got, I, I, I only, wear, <laughs> only wear black until they invent a darker color. Okay. 
All right, you know, we got the grain, we got the salt and pepper going. Ooh, right. Thanks, guys. But I got to say, since you're on fashion, and you know I love you, Katie, and you are rock and roll to the Thank bone. You. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't help but notice a Willie Nelson shirt on. <laughs> I know, it's so funny. So okay. Nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. Like, everyone loves Willie and what Willie stands for. But, yeah, um, yeah <laughs> I think it just, in the laundry day rotation, I like, I sat down at the computer and I was like, Willie Nelson shirt? Like, first off, where did this come from? Like, <laughs> I didn't even, I've been wearing it all day and didn't even realize until I sat down and saw my own like reflection on the screen. And I was like, oh, I guess this is the, this is what I'm going for. It's a bit off brand, but uh, you know. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Vinny has one of those shirts. Yeah, yeah. It's right Let next to you. his collection of albums I have. <laughs> See, I love Willie though, but. I'm no, not. Willie's great. Willie, Willie's a rock star and, and I've, any I've never book. been on the tour bus though. Oh, so I haven't gotten I haven't the, even. the reefer machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's about being able to leave the tour bus. That's the yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, 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 without, without falling down without the stairs. Crawling, and... Without crawling off the tour bus. Yeah, exactly. And Vinny, I can't believe you would have that shirt for the main reason that you have nothing that says have a nice day. Nothing. <laughs> that it is says, not ha you. Uh, have a have really been, nice oh, day. Says not say. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, not I, you. I, I would ruin my reputation. I, I have my Punisher right. thing on today, so Ooh. you can't see it though. Look how cool that is. There you go. See? Yeah, huh? oh. Every, you see how lucky like, I am, Katie, styling, every week with these guys? All right, gentlemen, guys? we're all looking good. We could go to the clubs if the clubs were only open. Yeah, if they were open. Hey, Katie, no, where are you at now? Are you in California? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm out in sunny Los Angeles. Beautiful She's in my Los old Angeles. house. In my old house. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm over in the valley. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, I lived there for a long time. I used yeah. to live right off of the Sunset Strip, um, but you know, turned into a mom, got a kid, needed to get the yard, <laughs> so had to move over there. There you go. Yeah. I moved even further away. I was in the Valley 30 plus years. Now I'm down near Temecula. Oh, wow. Oh, it's South beautiful Temecula. down there, though. Yeah. Good wineries, good. too. I was right? in the Valley yes. 40 years in LA, and now I'm in Florida. Okay, okay, great. So, person, you guys have lived here, been there, done that. I got to say, yeah. my biggest complaint about moving to the Valley is I cannot find a good takeout Chinese restaurant to save my life. And I have phoned every neighbor and friend that lives around here. And I'm like, so now that I live here, where do you guys get your Chinese food? And everyone says, there isn't a good one here. I don't I don't understand. But, Why is there you but can you get good cannoli down there? Because that's really the key. Uh, well, even more, what about bagels? Nah. You know, there's, there is a good bagel place Manhattan, just up the street Manhattan from me. Basil, good locks Manhattan and bagel. everything. Manhattan bagels good and there's a What's place that up, Chinese up place nice. that used to be in uh Chin 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 But do they That's have a Chin Chin in the valley? Yeah. I've always known the Chin Chin over the hill on the yeah, other it's side. In, uh, yeah, it's in next, Chino. next to next next to uh Studio City. It's yeah. next to Jerry's Deli. All right, yeah. all right. Right here, right now on Diners, Driving the Dives. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, wrong show. <laughs> sorry, let's talk about rock and roll. Let's talk about rock and roll. And I got another individual who's going to be phenomenal on that subject. A legend in her own right. Oh my gosh, I can't believe she's here. Let's bring Miss Sherry Curie from the Runaways. Hey! Hey! Hi, you rocking guys and gals. Well, look, I'm wearing enough black for all of you. <laughs> and, and Katie, I live I, now. I I was born here in the valley. Okay. Um, there you go. I've, I've lived in my house now for 23 years. It's in West Hills, and I'm right around the corner from the best Chinese uh, restaurant that delivers. Whoa! Okay, look at okay, this. Okay, perfect. Give me the details, or I'll make sure I contact Ken and get them from him. Yes, yes, they're amazing, and it's also they've also incorporated. A little bit of Japanese too, if you're into that. So it's great. Good. I know See, that I... one. Panda Express, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I don't like do that. that. Chin <laughs> yeah, that's nah, nah, funny. Nah. So Cherie, you know, we got to talk. But this is a music show. This is a rock and roll show. We are hanging and banging. That's what this is all about. But before we get there, I just think your art is freaking amazing. The chainsaw chick that you are. Wow. I mean, you guys, yeah, amazing. Amazing. I'm just telling you guys, chainsawchick.com, you got to see what she does with a chainsaw and a stump of wood is unbelievable. I'm is that something that you, I, you, you, I didn't know that. Wow. No, yeah. it's a big deal. 
Is that she something you started? She got really hurt doing it, too. You fell off of a ladder or something, right? Yeah, scaffold collapsed, unfortunately. But I don't remember it. It knocked me out cold. Um, it did damage my face quite a bit for a good solid year. I was paralyzed on this side. But you know what? Oh. I don't I don't remember the accidents, so that's a great thing. I finished the piece. So wow. even with a knot this big and all black and blue, I, I finished. So that's... That's Wait what a it's minute. all what about. What did you say? You it's, finished? You finished a piece? I finished yeah, the. Piece. I finished the carving. I finished. No, oh. no, 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 <laughs> a no. Piece. I, oh. no. When I was young, I wanted to finish a piece, but wow, I, but I didn't get one. that Whoa. chance. Hello, look at, hello. Look at this. Look at, look at this. <laughs> it's incredible that? stuff. What's that? So, but Cherie, is that something? I mean, oh, who's yeah. got it up? Look at that. That's, that's incredible. Cool. Yeah, that's wow. an eight, in my eight-foot praying woman that I did. Wow. Yeah, gorgeous. Yes. I've been doing this a long you... time. Yeah, I bet. Is wait, it something wait, you Becca, started? Becca, I've got a question. Mm -hmm. Question in the house. When you fell, you, were you holding the chainsaw? Yes, that I was. was oh. That's what I was thinking. I wow. was, and and I actually, uh, I did. I I imagine what I did. My assistant claims that this is what happened, but I was up on a scaffold like that, and um, he was wow. supposed to be helping me, but the clients called him away and I, I, I caught an edge. It's, it's what they call catching a piece of wood that will yank you forward. And it yanked me forward right off the wood and I flipped over backwards, oh, uh, wow. broke my tailbone on the back oh. and then flipped over onto my face holding that chainsaw. So I did, Ooh, yeah. God. So it's like this was, this and this <laughs> got, impacted ah. but you know I, I was out cold and they took the chainsaw wow. from me but i never cut myself i just i can't even Ooh. imagine wow. what was you know, going through my mind you decapitated yourself yeah well you know i think that's why i locked my arms when i was falling and kept it away yeah. i don't know Instant. all i know is that whatever i did i i i saved myself that's how for did sure. you get it? how'd you get into that sure. it was it was a, it was a fluke i was just going to um to the beach one day i was going over cane and dune road and i happened to see a couple of guys chainsaw carving um, at the side of the road at, at what was called the malibu mountain gallery mm. and i just could not get it out of my head every time i woke up uh, in the morning it, you know you got to listen to that voice right right yeah, katie yeah, Vinny, yeah, carmine no, ron yeah, yeah, we have to yeah. listen to that voice and that voice would not leave me alone i finally went back and i walked into this beautiful gallery and this voice said you can do this and they wow. brought me on board, and I immediately started winning, uh, you know, ribbons and competing. Wow. And yeah, I was competing in 2005, and I placed Amazing. in all the major major competitions. And I've been doing wow. it ever since. Yeah. Had you been? Had you done sculpting prior? Like, so had you worked in three dimensional? No. No, it was a how lot did, harder than wow. I thought it was going to be, That's too. Amazing. Yeah. How do you do it? I mean, who'd you like? Those you saw horses. You saw. People, what do you do? You draw them on a piece of paper first? No. It's just no. knowing that three-dimensional space, right? Yeah, that yeah, wow. the drawings don't do a whole lot, but um uh, you That's just cool. you just it's true. You kind of remove everything that doesn't look like what you're carving, you know. I mean you you wow. do have, it takes some time, but you know, I've taught people to carve. If, as long as you can see that three to that that um mm -hmm. that whatever it is in that log, you can do it. So for instance, you take that the horse one there, right? Mm -hmm. The end horse was, was that like a big fat log that you you cut away? Yeah, it was a, a big log that I cut in half, <laughs> and then each side was was the ends, and wow. uh, I just carved the uh, the heads from there. Wow! wow. Well, so yeah, I, I got some, love I got some trees down here in the. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Well, is it something that you can incorporate wow. in a musical, like like uh, was it the Lumberjack song by Jesse James Dupree uh, on Jackal? He comes when he, every time he does a show by everywhere by us. He says on his rider, I got to give him a wooden bar stool, and he all of a sudden out of a clear blue, he pulls out a, a, a chainsaw right in the middle of a song, does a lumberjack song, and cuts up the wooden bar stool right on stage. It, how about if yeah, you sure, do you your show? Yeah, sure, you got to work this into your show, right? You got you know the album what? you got to talk about, and then all of a sudden you right, got to, like, cut it with the chainsaw. Right during Cherry <laughs> Bomb or something, just, you know. <laughs> well, I actually, we were, well, I, I did a record with uh, with Bree Darling from Fanny, yes. and, and we were going to incorporate that into the beginning of the show where we had a big box with lights behind it, and I was going to, I'm really good at, at writing names in cursive, and I was just going to 
wow. you know, do Cherie and Brie kind of thing. But you know what? I, you're really not supposed to use a gas saw indoors. So yeah, right. that became an issue. Yeah. It's rock and roll, man. You it is it rock and roll. Ninety <laughs> percent isn't supposed to be done indoors. What rock yeah, and roll right? does. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Everybody's got masks now. So yeah, yeah. That shit. that's right. I think cutting up a bar stool is a little different than what Sherry does. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't do that. Uh, yeah, no, nah. it's amazing stuff. It's it's just incredible, and I can't yeah. wait. I mean, you do. Is it all? Is it all um, like contract stuff, or can we go to your website and actually buy something? Now I don't have anything. I I take orders only now. It's very uh, rare that you. I have time to actually and how's, and just. How's business? How's business? Oddly, I only give orders. Yeah. Hey. Uh, oh, behave. Whoa, that was good. That was good. <laughs> Katie, uh, I, I, I want to touch on something with you, Katie, because, you know, I, I'm a, I, I sincerely, truly am a huge fan. And I can tell you <clears throat> how that actually happened, because um, when, you know, back from 2013, you started with World's Greatest Tribute Bands. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my, my theaters are like 900 seats, and we have all these guys. We have the legends of rock and roll, but we also have some of the greatest tribute bands in the country. And I've learned to really, really respect the tribute bands. Oh, look at that. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, really learn to respect them because, you know, the, the, the real performers, you know, they have some a poetic or, or, or musical license. They could be off key a little bit. They can lose, be uh, forget a word, and the, the audience is fine. The tribute band, if you miss one syllable off one note, yeah. they're pointing like, you suck, you suck, you know. <laughs> so I really have a lot of uh, appreciation for them. What made you... Uh, put a whole show, as you, uh, you're a producer yeah. as well, around tribute bands and give them that respect. Yeah, so we started the World's Greatest Tribute Bands. It was a uh, national televised broadcast um, live from the Whiskey A Go Go. Um, it was broadcast on Access TV. And each week it was a different band and it was live from the Whiskey. So cool audience that was just ready to jam out. Um, and I hosted the show and I produced the show. So each mm -hmm. week I selected which band was going to be featured. Um, and these were all national touring acts. Uh, the, the idea actually came from Mark Cuban himself. So Mark Cuban is um, who created Access TV. It used to be called HDNet. Yeah. So Mark created HDNet. Um, oh, there's the Beach Boys one. The they Beach were so Boys. good and dreamy. Yeah. Okay, so these guys were so cute. We had a makeup artist, in, uh, you know, getting everyone ready for the TV broadcast. And so, like, these guys were all, like, 23, 24, 26 max. They were darling, had voices of angels. And they sat down in the makeup chair, and they were like, oh, oh, what's this? What's this? And then they got up, and I was talking to one of the guys, and he's like, it just felt like little kitten paws were patting my face back then. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you guys are so cute. cute. Get up there and rock out at the Whiskey A Go-Go. Um, but yeah, so Mark Cuban, who owned the TV network, said, uh, I want you to create a show all around tribute bands. And that was it. That was the only, only like guidance that he gave me was those two sentences. And so I rolled up my sleeves, figured out what tribute bands were because I was naive in the beginning. I, I, I thought a tribute band was a cover band and th mm -hmm. they're not. Obviously, these are people who right. do their I entire have, I show. I have a tribute band. Yeah, it's I, you are Jimi Hendrix, you are the Allman yeah. Brothers, you are Elton mm -hmm. John, you are Kenny Metcalf, and it's different than an impersonator as well, because impersonators don't necessarily uh, have the talent to go along with it. They just maybe stand good. and wave and greet people. But these guys, you know, bring in the bands and have the gear, sure. um, and it was such a fabulous show. I think we had about eighty episodes um, yes. for wow. a three-year period, um, and that's how fantastic. I found I first found out about you because I, that's what I was saying. We had probably. I don't know, maybe a dozen of, of the bands that you were that, that were on your show that did the tour, and we had about uh, like I said, it was Mr. Speed that did the Kiss one. Yeah. Remember them? How good they were? Oh, they were so um, good. So, and their their costumes were top notch, and like everything about them was perfect. That's it. You know, it's they put so much behind it, and it's so much work. But they all said the same thing: Katie was awesome. Aww. <laughs> And that's how we first learned about you. Yeah, I mean, all these guys are so talented, like you said. I mean, people are watching <laughs> and waiting for them to mess up. And these yep. guys, you know, they they are so well rehearsed. And in many mm -hmm. cases, they are better than the real thing because really? <laughs> they do practice so much. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they have so many gigs, whereas a lot of other bands, well, they, they go on tour and they practice just for that tour. But then all of a sudden, it's an 18-month hiatus. And then they're like, oh. 
got to get out there and do another show again. And some of them just don't care anymore. And some of the bands, the classic rock bands, are almost tribute bands themselves because the members have, you know, rotated in some, and out. Some, some of them bands. are. Some of them are completely tribute bands. Yeah, I mean, so look at all Foreigner. these musicians I, I really respect yeah. and I just love them. And I, I miss doing that show on Access TV so much. I, I did my own tribute band called The Rod Experience. Oh, Rod nice. Stewart, but I had members of the Rod Stewart band in it. I had a guy that looked like Rod. So and we played like the 1979 show, and we played Ron's place, right? Yeah, absolutely, so it's fabulous. fabulous. I didn't know Rod Rod was 300 pounds, but Carmine. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're doing, doing, I want to go back. We're doing a tribute next week, a couple of weeks. I saw. Anyway. I'm playing the music of Black Sabbath, that I. Yeah, that's. Play, so. Yeah, I don't know if I would Fun. consider that a tribute. I mean, not a tribute. I'm the only you're, original you're the guy. Deal. <laughs> in that band that's still out doing something you know everybody's retired Ozzy's not You're you haven't heard from Ozzy you know so keep the music yeah. and it's a lot please of fun. keep the music alive absolutely Sheree yeah. I, you know something I wanted to know for a long time I mean you know a lot of people don't realize that the Runaways you were so young 15 16 yeah. I mean 17 and the stuff that you were singing about between the sex, drugs, and major rock and roll that you were singing about, <laughs> I mean, was that stuff at 15 or so, did, could you say that you actually like knew what you were singing about? Or was that thrust upon you a little bit? Was that the oh, life? Hell yes. <laughs> uh, we, we, <laughs> back in the 70s, no, we, it, was, uh, it was a different time. It was a different age, right? That's right. I mean, the, yeah. the younger, and that's the thing, is the young, the young ones, like myself and the rest of the girls. I mean, you know, we were chasing after the older guys. It's just, that was just what was happening at that time, you know? Mm -hmm. The young the young kids, 60 and 70, were just too young for us. So mm -hmm. um, it just, it, you know, <laughs> there really wasn't age back then. We didn't think about age. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which is now just a major, major uh, I mean, I deal. Met, I met you guys back then. Really? Yeah, remember I remember. That? I remember, I remember, and I... Was he one of the older guys you were chasing? Yeah, was he, was he one yeah. of the creeps? <laughs> oh, we all... No, creeps. no. You, well, never he is done. now. I never, no. I, never, I, never, I never done any of those, I gotta say. I became good like friends with Like a fine wine, Vita. your creepiness gets better with age. <laughs> <laughs> More I, like a fine cheese. I became really close with Lita. She was like my little sister. Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, I you were we so you respectful. Lot, you, know? yeah. you were so respectful. I, I mean, honest to God. I mean, it kind of made me a little paranoid. I thought, what am I, that ugly or what? <laughs> it's like, what's, what's wrong with me? Yeah, what's what? What's wrong? What doesn't he see in me? <laughs> yeah. He didn't know uh, you had a chainsaw. That's right. That would have oh, taken, believe me. That came a Absolutely. lot later. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, we did, we did a gig. We did a gig together, The Runaways, and I was playing with Rick Derringer. Derringer at the uh, Starwood. Remember yes. the Starwood? That's right. I love we, the Starwood. We, we went and opened for Aerosmith, and then after we went on, we would gotten the the whole the crew and the band and drove up to the Starwood, and then uh, set us up. Went on like at twelve o'clock or something. It was killer. It was, what a great yeah, show. Yeah. It's packed. Yeah. Yeah. You guys talk about respectful and stuff, and I'm gonna you know get, just take a side second for a moment here because. We're always talking about rock and rollers, and some of them got, you know, we had Nugent on, everybody on, and they've got their other side, Ozzy, you know. But you talk about Carmine, you talk about Vinny, two of the most stand up guys in rock and roll. And it's really nice to hear that even late, even much, much earlier, that you're respectful and maybe, maybe not the reputation you wanted back then, but it's nice to have that now. So hats off to you two brothers, really. Yes, absolutely. Bro. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Did you read Carmine's book? Well, you know what? I think <laughs> we're not. Some of it, you know, oh, my, my, book, of the story my book is called "Stick It: My Life of Sex, Drums, and Rock and Roll." Yeah, <laughs> but that was respectful. There's crazy stuff in there. Uh, but it's there's... respectful with the tuna fish and whatever. That was but it's not, respectful. It's, <laughs> sex is capitalized, and uh, you read the book and then say that. Yeah. Well, I was the good <laughs> brother. I'm that's the good what I brother. meant. Which is weird. Brother. The guy from. The guy from Black Sabbath is the good one versus the vanilla He, was, he was the good one. I was the wild one. He's the bad one. Bad I was one. the really? wild one. I mean, come on. It was crazy. 
Yeah. Well, let me, Katie, let me ask you. I don't know if you ever did this in the 80-some uh, episodes that you did. Um, if you if you if you did dress up and appear as, as one of those tributes, who was it? And if you didn't, who would you, if you and let's not even let's let's take the runaways out of that running right now. Okay. Like who what band, what would you be a tribute artist about? Uh, oh God. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is really hard because I believe that if you're going to do a tribute, you need to try and sound it and, and look like them, right? So I'm not gonna look like, but the it, you kind of have to go to like, who do you sing at karaoke, right? Like, what's your right. range? So unfortunately, I'm kind of like a John Fogarty <laughs> CCR. <laughs> um, but I'm not uh, sure I, I really so. look like Fogarty. Hopefully not. <laughs> well, maybe on a, a Sunday morning, maybe you should do it or something. <laughs> Got that Fogarty look to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, and, and I could do some of those uh, David Lee Roth, like, uh, it was pretty good. So oh, I could nice, that. nice. That was good. <laughs> Was that was far from Fogarty right there. Yeah, That's yeah, Fogarty yeah. getting his toe stepped on. But then, you know, it, it <laughs> came down to, you know, wardrobe that I'm jealous of. I mean, who doesn't want to put on a top hat and twirl and do a little Stevie Nicks? Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, I, kinda... don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I think you'd make a great Stevie Nicks. I really do. Yeah, yeah you would oh, make thanks. a great Stevie. Yeah, you would. <laughs> thank you. I've been told that before, too, but I don't go there. <laughs> Was there one, uh, Katie, was there one band, uh, now you obviously, were you part of the uh, um, the uh, uh, application process or the audition process? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, every band went through me. Um, yeah. Even wait the ones that didn't wait make it. Wait a minute. Wait yeah, a minute. Yeah, so send your Stop it, away. Carmine. I just said how respectful you were three I seconds know, but look ago. look what she said. Everyone went through It's me. not her yeah, fault. Yeah. Hey, Katie, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Every band went through Well, so <laughs> any of the bands that went, so we did, you know, uh, like, uh, 80 bands and mm -hmm. so that was like over seven or eight seasons and all the bands had to submit like an application process to be on the show so you know they had to submit their demo reel their photos audio samples and all that stuff and all of that curated through me oh. did you wow. have repeat repeat bands like there were a couple i think we repeated um let's see oh that's a great question so we brought back um we had the beatles three times Two different mm -hmm. Beatles bands. One of them came back twice, and one was on once. Um, wow. The Fab Four came on twice, um, and one time they did the entire Sgt. Pepper album start to I finish. I love that band. Uh, I, see, I see them at the casino. Of that. Yep. Yeah. Um, let's great. see. I had our Elton John, Kenny Metcalf. He he was on once, but then he made guest appearances. Like he came on with one of the the Who tribute band, and they did like the Pinball Wizard and all that. Hmm. Um, so he made multiple appearances. Uh, I think we did Zeppelin twice because, again, I think we had them do one of the Zeppelin albums start to finish. Mm -hmm. um, but so Sorry out of like 80 episodes, I'd say there was maybe like four that weren't, weren't totally fresh. Hmm. OK, I mean, it's, it's a great cool. show. I, I mean, is there any chance of it coming back? You know, unfortunately, the, the problem is, is it, it, it was a quote unquote cheap show to do considering it was live, but it was expensive because, you know, as you guys know, with music rights and yeah, um, that's you know, tough getting part. that all taken oh, care yeah, of, it, it, yeah. it was hard because it was expensive because we only did it one night. It was a live show and then we didn't repeat it because having to pay for the sync rights to have multiple airings Forget is where the it. money really yeah. kicked in. Um, so we were able to do the one live broadcast and right now the network access TV isn't really focused on live programming They're very much focused on music right now um, And so that's why I now have a new show on the network um, called the top ten revealed and um, That you can catch on multiple repeats. I swear if you turn on access TV you just see me on a loop It feels like sometimes Love it. Yeah. Well, what's, what's, what's revealed? Oh, so the top ten revealed. That's th thank you for asking. So oh. um, season four premieres this Sunday, uh, May the 9th at uh, eight Eastern, five Pacific. And every week, it's 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 kind of a, a good old fashioned countdown show, right? So one week it might be the top ten '70s breakup songs, top ten uh, '80s hard rock hits, oh, top cool. ten songs with rain in the title. Um, mm -hmm. So this Sunday will be top ten smoking hot songs. Think of like Hot for Teacher. Um, it's hot Smoke in on here. the water. Smoke Smoking in the boys' room. Uh, hot, yeah, so hot, hot legs. Songs. Hot and legs. And so we count down this yeah. list of 10 hot songs, but you don't just see the songs. You have um, guest stars commenting. So you'll hear Dee Snyder, uh, Sebastian Bach, Margaret Cho, Matt Sorum, 
um, uh, Paul Stanley. So we have Vinny Apice. Vinny Apice. Oh, he so, left. <laughs> He left. Yeah, uh, Sherry was going to come on, but uh, I think she was away, away in Big Bear when we were shooting. So uh, yeah. we hope to have her come in July when we actually do the next shoot. So it's a half hour show and you just get to count down this list of great rock and cool. roll songs and get commentary from cool uh, rockers and music experts. Great, cool. great show. I mean, it it's, it's it's nice because it's not strictly your, you know, the, this is the top, tour, the top 10 of the Billboard charts. It's, right. it's, it's. The theme itself is fun, you know, finding out it what is. theme it is. Like right? what, this season, not only we have like, so the season premiere is hot songs, but we also have um, top 10 like end of the world songs. So you like, you could get to like, it's the end of the world as I know it by REM, but sure. also uh, Bad Moon Rising by CCR. Um, or top 10 social distance tunes, Don't Stand So Close to Me. You know, oh, things like, you like See? staying yeah, alive and I will yeah. survive. Things that kind of yeah. got us through quarantine when you're like, That's funny. this would be a funny playlist. And top so we 10, put yeah. together top 10, those... top 10 car songs, you know? Yes, we did. We, last season, we did top 10 songs about your ride. Yeah, that's See, me. I like that it's one. It's a great concept, and you know what? We've got we've we've got some top ten uh, moments uh, uh, on this show. But uh, before we touch on that and, and our episode one hundred, uh, we're gonna go to a commercial about next week's super duper oh, show week. I'm excited right. about this, like I am every week. Uh, what's happening next week on Artists on Lockdown? Hanging back. Hey, it's Carmine PC here for Hanging and Banging. Oh. I got a new hairstyle. Oh, what do you yeah, think? New color. I got really tired of dyeing my hair, so this is the real me. I've got great reaction on Facebook. But anyway, May 13th, hanging and banging. We got Matt Pinfield from MTV and uh, radio personality. He's also on Paradise City right now on uh, Netflix. And um, we also have Todd Suckerman, a great drummer, really good, really, really good drummer. He plays with sticks. Love Todd's playing, he's a good guy. So we're gonna have some fun with him. So remember, it's on uh, Hanging and Banging. It's on Facebook Live, Artists on Lockdown. Uh, Hanging and Banging with Carmine and Vinny, a piece or apathy. A piece or apathy, ah! I'm tired of correcting everybody. But I'm a piece, <laughs> Vinny's apathy. Okay, so we'll see you there. We're gonna have some fun. May 13th, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. We'll see you there it's on YouTube as well. Uh, just look up Carmine and Vinny a piece. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vinny a piece. <laughs> no, Carmine a piece. Anyway, you know what I mean. I'll see you there. Make sure everybody checks out our YouTube channel, our Facebook page. Smash it, like it. Everybody catch our podcast on Spotify. And we are back now with uh, Miss Kate Carroll and Cherie, Cherie from the Runaway. Cherie. Let me ask you something. Oh, I love it. So I know we touched on on uh, the chainsaw chick thing, and I do want to move on. But I just I, I am so enamored with this this part of you that uh, that uh, not as m- many people know uh, that they should. That's for sure. But I did see one comment that was interesting to me, uh, and and you made it. You said that um, that the the chainsaw carving was what you were meant to do. You know, in your life, it was what it was you were meant to do, and, and obviously because you're so renowned in the music world, how, how do you feel that that uh, overcame, overtook the music part of your life? Oh, uh, you mean the carving that overtook my music? It never really did. Uh, it was just something that, but when you can't stop thinking about it, very much like you mm-hmm. know anybody that's been in music as long as everyone on this you know show has been sure you know that's something that you never ever can walk away from it's just something that's in your blood and and i I guess that the carving i found out was also something uh, i couldn't let go of so i just have to do it i'll do it the rest of my life like i'll do music the rest of my life are you what are you doing these days musically i know uh, you had a couple albums come out in 2019 the one with brie was fabulous um, I actually loved um, a couple of cuts on there in, uh, in particular. Um, but uh, are, you, are you doing some live outside of COVID, of course? But I mean, well, are you going back out? Well, you know, you, you were talking about Matt Sorum, uh, the record yeah. that he produced for me 10 years ago. Uh, Blackheart oh. finally put it out right at lockdown. 
Wow. Uh, it, it came out uh, in a pressing for Record Store Day in 2019, and then they decided to release it. Uh, uh, no physical copies, but my God, it did so well. It's such a killer album. And it's got, you know, uh, the guys from Guns N' Roses, you know, Slash and Duff. It's got Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins. Oh, nice. It's got Brody Dahl and uh, the Veronicas and even Juliette Lewis came. And it's the be it's the album I always wanted to make after The Runaways. And unfortunately, it comes out right when the pandemic hits. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and there was no nothing I could do about it. It did very well, though. But um, is that... I would, uh, is that is that Boulevards of Splendor? That's right. Yeah, Boulevards of Splendor. I mean, Vinny, you know, Carmine, you would love, Ron, you would love this record. I'm serious. I mean, it's, I'm so proud of it. It's so rock and roll. It kicks ass. And um, I, so I'd but like to- I love to the fiddle on there. I love your, your, you went with a fiddler on this one. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know what? On a couple of songs, um, Gosh darn it! And again, my my sixty one year old mind cannot yeah. remember the name of this guy that's been a friend of mine for <laughs> forever. Join join the club. I yeah, know. Right. You did yeah, tons I like, press for it too. I saw you everywhere. I mean, obviously, I interviewed you for Access TV's At Home and Social, but like you were hustling. So like it did great, but like you did great, like really busting your butt out there. I saw you like on every morning show. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to tour on that record. It deserves it, you know, and it's. I mean, I loved working with Bree. It was fun, but you know, it, that's really rock and roll is something that I, again, in my blood, got to do yeah. it. So uh, oh, yeah. I'll I'll tour on this. Hopefully, I'll tour on this record once everything lightens up. Yeah. Well, I hope you'll do "Gimme Shelter" uh, from Motivator because I'll tell you what, that is an amazing. If you guys haven't heard her do "Gimme Shelter" with the rape is and there, murder is thing, there a video? Do you have any videos? Rape, that's it, man. I mean, it's incredible mm -hmm. version. Is there video Thank you. There? Can we see it on YouTube or anything? Actually, the motivator is the one that I is one of my favorites. I think that uh, Dave yep. Darling did an amazing job uh, in the arrangement of that song. Um, and you know, I, I, there's a few songs on there that I'm really proud of. All right, since you brought up uh, since we brought up motivator, I do have a quick question on this though. So early on, on, on your other album, you're, you're talking about some of the you know Billy Corgan and some of those guys, heavy hitters that were you know part of that project. The motivator was interesting. Obviously, uh, uh, the great actor, your ex husband Robert, was on there, Robert Hayes. But uh, <laughs> but um, uh, you had uh, uh, Susan Olsen, yes, <laughs> Cindy Brady on that. Now what what. what you know, maybe she's not as, as much of a rocker as I thought maybe Peter Brady was with his voice changing. <laughs> Greg, Greg was a rocker. I mean, he no, had that attic it's going. It's and Greg. It's or Greg, Greg, not Peter. Time to yeah. change. Was it, time, was it? I thought it was Peter. Anyway, the point Greg, is. Na, 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 na. <laughs> what, what did Susan do on that? Uh, on that? Susan, Susan. Now, Susan is like my sister, and I'm not kidding. I mean, she's been a part of this family for a long time and and she's a bass player i mean she really she loves music and she came and sang a bunch of background vocals um uh, with bob and uh, you know as well and a bunch of other friends and my sister sandra you know it was great for us to bring in our family and friends to sing on a couple of tracks but susan's always uh, there for me whenever i need a vocal or two she's great God, I, know, I, I met her at one of the shows too at one of the horror shows Vinny, you yeah. When we did, Vinny, remember when we did our Sinister album and we brought our older brother Frank and our sister in to do backgrounds yeah. at your house? Oh, and we had to pay him. <laughs> that sucks. And you know, Ron, <laughs> so Ron, family, I wanna, I, I'm so yes, sorry that I'm the only one that is this way. I should have turned my yeah. phone that way. And you look fabulous, I'm my so dear. I'm so sorry. I'm the, you I'm the look odd man this you way look or good. that way. Yeah, you look good anyway. You're beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's that? We're, we're all that way, too. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, my God. This is what you guys look like when you're sleeping, right? I don't want to see this. Can I don't I want do to that? see this. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about you guys. I'm getting hungry for Chinese food. Oh, man. <laughs> go to Chin Chin's. I'm not too far from where I live. <laughs> yeah, way far. 
You know, yeah. uh, uh, Katie, I, I just, and again, I got to go back a little bit again to the, to the, uh, uh, the tributes because I mean, again, sure. the, the, it's, you know, you're looking at it. We talk about, you know, the foreigners of the world and sure. you know, that uh, people are like just passing away or they're retiring and, mm-hmm. and, you know, I mean, within 10 years, besides the apathy of peace brothers and, you know, and the runaways, who's going to be around really? Are you trying Keith to cheer Richards. us up? Keith Richards will always be <laughs> yeah, Keith Richards will be there. Actually, he passed away about ten years ago. Nobody told him, but um, <laughs> he's already started the the, the process. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But but you know when you're doing these um, the, the tributes, you know we do them here, and uh, and you said that you got part of the, obviously the selection process. You know some of them we talked about how amazing they are. They are right. Oh, sure. But those other ones, those other ones, <laughs> some of them are so bad. Was is there a creep? Like for me, I love Elvis. I love the good Elvis, Elvis tributes, but Sometimes these Elvis guys look so freaking scary. Yeah. So that's a, you know that's a really good point. So obviously, since I saw all the applications that came through and went through with them, I I literally did see the good, the bad, and the ugly. I mean, so give me an ugly, give me an ugly. Oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna throw someone under the bus, but I will. No say, name, but you know. when when it came to Elvis. Uh, that was one in particular that I was like, you have to hit that really perfect yeah, so it doesn't feel hokey. And so the gentleman that I found was Justin Shandor, and he had actually Great. won the Graceland like mm-hmm. Elvis competition the year prior and yes. like had their their gold star approval. Um, and that was really important to me because I wanted to make sure it was someone that was legit good, not hokey. Um, but boy, I saw some really bad ones. There was a Motley Crue band, <laughs> and I really can't even remember their name, that not only did they look and sound terrible, but they were really rude in every season when I was like, hey, thanks for your application. You didn't make it this round. They were just nasty. But then they'd have the nerve to reapply the next season. I was like, yo, you were so rude to me. I'm still the same person. I'm not letting you in now, even if you got better. Like, you're dicks. Hey, Katie, that was me. <laughs> That was him. I believe it. I believe it. When it comes to dicks, there's no bigger one than that man right there. I figured we'll we'll do it again. Maybe we'll get on. Yes. That Black Sabbath tribute band that keeps coming back like a bad dream. (laughs) And that's what I was talking about. You know, Justin Shandor, Mm -hmm. uh, Sean Clush. I mean, these are Elvis guys that actually did, as as, as, uh, uh, Katie mentioned, um, and. that intern it's an international competition down in Graceland and they have a thing called Three Faces of the King that tours around with those yes. winners. It's incredible. But we got one guy over here he did this whole Elvis thing. I've got this great show his his wife told us about. It. I said I right, bring him in. So it was Elvis with a brutal Italian accent. Oh. And I'm like, Are you serious? He was like, A hunk a hunk of burning a love. Uh, it was it was you couldn't have, you couldn't have you couldn't have faked it worse, oh, and it's man. just amazing. And it, but it's legit. He came on, and his his pork chops here, I'm telling you, it was like like the shaft afro kind of shifted over. <laughs> it was like this. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! The good, the bad, and the ugly. We just yeah. got the ugly. They were <laughs> good. It was just ugly, ugly, uglier, and just friggin'. I think it's friggin' brutal. Was with the title. That we uh, actually used. Um, how, uh, 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 Shri, back in the day, you know, again, you guys are, are, are forming. I mean, you guys were huge. I saw, we all know about the Japan stuff, how the runaways were just, it was, you know, I mean, talk about Elvis. You're bigger than Elvis, bigger than the Beatles, or like the Beatles in Japan. It was crazy. How did that affect you when that first, when that first big, again, you're 15, 16, 17, uh-oh. Like, oh my gosh, street uh, packed and you can't drive. You can't even drive down the street. How did that How did that affect you? Well, you, we really didn't realize that we had become as big as we did until we landed in Japan. I mean, we knew we were getting, because we were always on the road. If we weren't on the road, then we were in the studio. So then we had taken no breaks whatsoever. And uh, so it was, it, was, uh, it was a relief to know all that work was, you know, worth it well i tell you it's it was really something because you know i think i think it was likened to the arrival of the beatles in the united states and your arrival in japan just complete what, craziness what year was that sherry what that was at 77 77 yeah i, I went to japan the first time in 1973 with jeff beck and tim bogart wow and, and it was the same kind of 
thing except we played the Budokan. They didn't yeah. even have lights. They had three <laughs> 10,000 volt huge airplane landing lights, the kind that used to shoot up into the sky. They that had, was six, they had wow. six of those on the stage shooting in. But when we landed at the airport and we came out of the airport, you know, we didn't know either. Like you guys didn't know. All yeah. of a sudden, these they started attacking us, mm -hmm. and, and I'm running for the car, and I'm feeling my hands going like, Phew. yes, pulling your hair out. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know. Oh my God. And we, we got into the limo and said, "What the hell was that?" You know, because yeah. we had been over to Europe and everything else, and it didn't happen over there. Only in Japan. Yeah, in Japan. Yeah, they. Lo I was when. And they had all the cops there when we got off the plane, yeah. and, and they were rushing us and breaking cameras. And uh, I saw this hand come for Lita's long yeah. brown hair, oh, yeah. and she grabbed it, and I grabbed her wrist. And right then, someone grabbed my hair and just oh. tore a bunch out. And oh. at, at that time, it was wow. Who who took care of you then, Udo? Yeah. Yeah, Udo. of course. Oh, yeah, yeah of he course. took care of everybody. Yeah. 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 So now someone has like your hair in a scrapbook, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're right oh there. Yeah. Hey, hey, I thought Lita's hair was blonde. No, no. That was, no. Later. That was later. Not in the runaways. No. She, no. she was she was so funny because Lita turned around. She goes, I'm never, can I say the F word? Yeah. No. Please. Yeah. I'm, ne yeah. I'm never going to get a fucking tattoo and I'm never going to dye my hair blonde. This is what she was <laughs> screaming oh at me. It's like. Well, Next time I see her, she's I, got that huge dragon yeah, and, and yeah. spiked blonde hair. You know, I, I told this before, but I went to, to, a couple of years ago, I went to like a lunch in, in uh, Valencia with Lita and Tim Bogart. Right? Now, Tim Bogart had gray hair. He looked like, you know, an old guy. He had no tattoos, white skin. And then his Lita had tattoos all over her <laughs> and the blonde yeah. and me with black and purple hair. I think we're in like an IHOP or something, you know. <laughs> it was it was quite an, an experience IHOP. to see the three of us together. They had reservations, Ron. <laughs> hey, <laughs> had reservations. Hey, but they went anyway. Anyway, yeah, yeah. all right. So, you know wait, what? wait, what happened? What happened? Not it's it's funny <laughs> to see it. The end. They oh, ordered the uh, the that's Grand all. Slam. <laughs> Thank thanks you. for, no, that's thanks for tuning in and good night. That's Denny's. <laughs> oh. Denny's. Sorry, I got my pancake houses. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Denny's. Yeah, that's right. All you could eat pancakes at Vinny IHOP. Vinny would know that. Vinny would know I'm that. I'm the pancake king. <laughs> the pan king. Uh, pan king. Katie, what is on the horizon for Top 10 Revealed? I mean, give us a couple of possible, like, themes that could be yeah. coming up that we could be excited about. So, so we have a lot of great ones coming this summer, this uh, starting this Sunday on Access mm -hmm. TV uh, at eight Eastern, five Pacific. Uh, uh, I didn't hear that. When was it? <laughs> eight <laughs> Eastern, five Pacific. Boom! Access TV. Check your local listings. Um, yeah. You know, so you when it, we have a, an episode that's the ode to the color black. So top 10 songs that have black in the title. So think of um, Black Hole Sun is on there, but also Paint It Black Paint by it the black. Rolling Stones. Yeah, yeah. So my, what's great about the show is all I have to do is tell you the topic and like you'll chime in like Carmine. Yeah, You're like, right. oh, I know what's on the, I know what's yeah. going to be one at number one. Is it's this song concept. on the list? And so everyone gets involved. Uh, so Ode to the Color Black is really fun. Uh, we also have space songs. So think of like Rocket Man, mm -hmm. Major Tom to Ground Control. So oh, yeah. Space, love that Intergalactic song. Planetary by the Beastie Boys. Yeah. Um, so space songs. And we go, I mean, listen, we go really way back and to current music. So, you know, Fly Me to the Moon with Frank Sinatra doesn't well, who, deserve who to be on this picks list. The ten, who picks the 10, the top 10? Uh, viewers like you, Carmine. So we actually <laughs> post the question on the Access TV social media pages like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and okay. we allow people to vote and write it in. And once again, it all goes through me. And oh, I curate the black and page, figure out. Frank She's an executive producer, excuse me, up and down. Hey. And creator, thank you very much. Hey, hey Katie, wow. when, is, much. When, is, hey. when is that on? <laughs> Sundays at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on Access TV. The top yeah. 10 revealed. Part of Sunday so, Night Rocks. Hey, ding. Speaking of space songs, Space yeah. Oddity, David yeah. Bowie. Your inspiration, Miss Cherie Curie, was David Bowie. 
Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and Susie Quattro as well, but David yes. was my main guy, sure. I, I didn't even and know. even I'm your just, look. Your look well, was more David Bowie than Susie Quattro. Yeah, Joan Joan was was Susie Quattro. I was mm -hmm. David Bowie. I mean, we yeah. were so young. I mean, we didn't know who we were. I mean, Joan was very insecure. So was I. But, I mean, she would just pull her hair down so that no one could see her face. And, mm -hmm. and so the thing, both of us didn't, you know, we just didn't know who, who we were going to be on stage because we'd never right. been on stage before. So uh, we just kind of pretended to be our heroes for a while until we kind of got the hang of it. And it worked. It was great. And until you came into your own and then, right. or uh, let me just rephrase that, until you became the uh, pioneer of the rock and roll corset. <laughs> well, the corset was my idea. The girls didn't really like that very much, but I, I was Was it too feminine? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I think it was, uh, they just, you know, the fact that I was on the cover alone, which was, I, I disagreed with, but it was just happened to be the shot that, that Kim Fowley wanted. But I was at the Starwood and we were doing a sound check and I, there was this little uh, boutique for right across the street that was uh, for corsets and that single white corset was in the mirror I mean in the window and I could see it across the street and I just I, I jaywalked I mean I don't think even I don't even think I would notice the cars I was so taken. you didn't look before crossing <laughs> no I just saw that corset and I beelined for it and and I knew that wearing that for cherry bomb was going to yeah. really be a statement. Uh, the girls didn't like the idea, of course, but it was only for three minutes. A lot of people think that I wore that thing for the whole show, but it was just for Cherry Bomb. And that's what they say. I mean, it's, it's been said that that course at that shot really, and obviously Cherry Bomb, your biggest hit, um, legendary song, but um, a lot of people have said that, that the, the corset part of that whole thing really added to the buzz of the song, in the beginning anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, you, you you know, I'm 16 years old in a corset and fishnets on stage. It hadn't, hadn't really been done yet. <laughs> so, uh, I think, I mean, and Madonna, that stinker, you know, yep. she she turns around and says she was the first. It's, and I know she knows Pioneer. she wasn't. Right. Pioneer. I was, pioneer. I pioneered the corset. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes. I want to officially yep. uh, name you the pioneer of the rock and roll corset. And... <laughs> And in, in your honor, I think next week, Vinny, you should don one because you're a pioneer in rock and roll. I, and I've thought of you many a night in, in a corset. <laughs> you're, you're, if I'm going to wear this, you wear the corset. <laughs> you're a sick man, Ron. Yes, sir. I, I'm very, very sick. All I have to say is... Hey! And another thing about Miss uh, Curie, she's a twin, Right. You've I got, am. You, you've got yeah, Marie yeah. Marie Curie, who I know you yeah. did. You did a. I think you did wow. an album. It was about 1980. You did an album with her, and you didn't. But you haven't done anything with her since. Is there? I mean, is it something that you did in uh, from just one shot and and done? Well, my, my twin. Well, it's it's curry, not curie. It's curry. I know. I like, know. like the spice. But um, know. but but Marie was married to Steve Lukather. Guys yes. know Steve. Oh, I and, know that. Sure. And Marie oh. really thought that, I mean, it's one thing to th think you want to be in, you know, in a rock and roll band and be on stage. It's one thing to th th imagine that that might be something you want. Mm -hmm. It's a different thing to actually do it. And yeah. uh, she really believed she wanted to do it. And uh, so we made a record. And before we even hit, you know, went on tour, um, she and Steve decided that they wanted to have babies. And Marie pulled out after the record had come he out. We were yeah, I was hating it, and and that uh, really uh, they they dropped me from the label. Well, we spent a quarter of a million dollars on that wow. record. It was those really were the a, days back then. Remember those days? Yeah. Well, it those was you days. know Jay Winding and all of Toto playing on it. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it was basically a Toto record. But it's yeah. a great record. But you know, not much you can do with a twin act when one twin doesn't want to do do the yeah. touring. Yeah. So well, it's, it's really amazing. Everybody, you know, you start everybody, out, everybody thought me and Vinny were twins. <laughs> why would you want to? Why would you want to admit to that, Carmine? I mean, I, please. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, we were joined together too. They had to operate. Sherry, did that create a riff between?
between you guys? It did. Sure yeah. it did. You know, yeah. because uh, there was no way back for me after that. I mean, uh, uh, that was basically the end of my, my music career. Um, and that was too bad because I really... I'd worked really hard for it, but you know, and anytime anyone asks my opinion, you know, don't work with family mm -hmm. uh, and tough. put everything in it because you especially, you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't the right choice. And I knew it, I should have listened to my gut, but I didn't do that. That's the second, uh, you know, uh, bit of advice I'd like to yeah. give is, is, you know, listen to your gut. If your gut says, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. Well, you know, the Runaways were only really together just a few short years, from right. three, four years or so. And and really a, a tremendous impact, groundbreaking, again, pioneers in rock and roll, the first real rock and roll fee all, all female band that played your own instrument, instruments. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and, and you guys, you know, it's it's also legendary why you guys broke up. We all know that the challenges that, that you know, rock and roll, the business, youth, uh, crazy people being involved, all that stuff had to do but had that not happened uh sheree um where do you how far i mean where do you think the band i mean look how far the band went just in those few years where do you think the band could have gone or could have accomplished oh well you know i think uh it, had they just let us rest even just give us a little bit of time off yeah. and had a mo that you helps. know someone to, to to you know moderate our our meetings i mean we didn't have anyone to sit us down if there was you know someone was having a problem with a band member i mean just nothing we didn't have any help no adults to come in and and mm -hmm. try to help us talk talk things out had they just given us a few a few breaks so that we could rest and and get our energy back i don't think it would i don't think i would have left name, but um, name sherry name all the members of the runaways well um the only members that i really bring up are the members that the founding members which yeah. is yeah uh lita mm -hmm. joan uh jackie and uh sandy west sandy. and myself yeah, yeah sandy. i knew God sandy love her. really God love well her. i knew sandy yeah. really well she yeah was, she was her. so so nice you met her a bunch of times we did a bunch of uh drumming events that she showed up at and she was always yeah. always always wanting to learn something you know, yeah, hey, she uh, was fabulous. Yeah, she passed God, away or something, right? Yeah, she absolutely. did. Yeah, in two thousand and six, she died of uh, of lung cancer. Uh, yeah, was horrible. So, so Katie, nice. was there ever a Runaways tribute that you saw worth anything? Um, I don't even remember ever getting a submission in general for one. You know, we got mm. we had a Joan Jet, but I never got a submission for a Runaways tribute. I wonder if that's out there. Any chance? I mean, uh, Sharia, you probably get this uh, question. Uh, well, any I, chance of any kind of a some sort of reunion again, like you did in twenty? Hey, Ron, are you thinking of starting a tribute band? I'm st I'm thinking of starring in one. <laughs> so <laughs> a Runaways well, tribute band, you'd be you'd, great. I think I'd be great. I, well, I've played with all the girls individually. I've I've mm -hmm. played with all of them. With Lita, with you know Joan, of course Sandy. I I never did a show without her yeah. before she passed away. Um, and so I'm the only one that's actually played with all the members. I, you know, Lita and Joan have a little bit of an issue, and that just seems yeah, to be the do. problem. Do. Yeah, Lita doesn't like Kenny, and uh, um, yeah, yeah. so I, I wish they would get over it, honestly. But I don't think so. So. That's too you've bad. Got a, you've got a great relationship with Kenny Laguna. He even he gave you a suggestion for a song on one of your albums, I believe. Or Well, Kenny was my manager yeah. at that time. Yeah. Um, we were very good friends for 20 years. Um, but that, you know, unfortunately, with the record, with them holding up uh, Boulevards of Splendor for 10 years, that kind of uh, eroded my friendship with him a bit. Uh, it's, it's too bad. Ten years yeah. a long time. I mean, yeah, it is. is. Yes. So to be a yes. Little but you're still a black. Are you still a Blackheart? No, no. Oh, I, I, okay. I haven't been with them for uh, nine years now. No. Wow. Well, listen, guys. You know, it's the time is approaching us uh, very shortly. Um, we go till uh, uh, we do this for an hour, but so many times we have been answering, asking questions that our uh, our. Our customers, our people, our fans have been asking, and there's one specifically that uh, uh, comes uh, from someone uh, for Katie. Now, Katie, I, I started to touch on. I know, I know. Uh -oh. I started. No, 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 no. I started to touch on this a little bit earlier about you know you being uh, uh, you know if, if you were to be in one, and you you talk about Fogarty, but <clears throat> if there was one that you could actually, I mean, if 
forget about what you sound like, what you look like, but who you would do, who you'd love to be a part of, who you'd go out there. Would it be a Lady Gaga thing? Would it be something? What would be the most extraordinary one that you would love to? We all want to be somebody, whether we sound or look like them or not. Who would you like to be out, out there in the tribute world? And it doesn't matter the gender? No. Okay. I just want to make sure I didn't like. Um, <laughs> Break the rules, boy. huh? I mean, listen, <laughs> I got to say, and, and this may be a really cheesy answer, but being in a Beatles tribute band, I think, would be amazing. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Yeah. They did so much. Oh, they yeah. wrote yeah. so yeah. many songs. Yeah. The the range of their music, you know, from bubblegum pop to just like really great dark stuff. Um, their individual careers. I think just the talent in that band to be remotely involved and in, within the room of someone of the Beatles' presence, I think would be fantastic. I think, that, you know, they're the heart of rock and roll. That's a great answer. And, you know, um, <clears throat> Sheree, a lot, you know, you've had such a, I mean, an amazing career and continue to do so. I mean, between the, the chainsaw art, <laughs> between the runaways, between the you know all the other projects, including an accomplished actress, and you made it to Murder She Wrote. I mean, what else you need? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, you know, it's funny. I just lost my mom. It was a great oh. thing. At ninety eight, she died last. Oh, year. Oh, yeah, great. just just a month and a half ago. But yeah. I mean, she was ninety seven. Excuse me, but she is all. She had Alzheimer's, and that was rough. So, yeah. uh, um, but my mom was a fantastic actor and, and she never shared any of that with us kids. So it wasn't until I'd left acting that all of a sudden I saw some of her movies and I just, if only I'd known that, you know, that was coursing through my body because my mom was an exceptional actor. So it's, you know, just, I guess that's why I just love chainsaw carving so much is I don't have to think of all the mistakes I've made in my life. <laughs> Well, ladies, I can just we... take it out on the wood, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, on that scary yeah. subject, on that scary note, uh, I want to thank you guys so much for joining us. This was a wonderful, wonderful show. Thank really you. nice thank getting to know me. you. Katie, Daryl, God, God love you. All the stuff that you, and you know what? A toast to Mark Cuban for creating yeah. Access TV because that is an amazing outlet. It's, it's, yeah. it's MTV yeah. on steroids. Love Access TV. It so is. all can, the best you can watch, to you. I have weekly interviews every every Thursday at, for at home and social. Everyone from someone like Sherry to um, you know, I think this week, next week we're talking to the guys of the Offspring. So check out at home and social on Fridays. We do the Music High Five, which is our weekly music show, and then on Sundays is the Top Ten Revealed. So you you have three opportunities to stalk me each week. Wow, well, nice! It's, it's, you give us no opportunity to go to any other channel. So I love it. I love it. All the best to you and Miss Curry. You know what can we say? Legend. Thanks. Icon. Do you are you you're coming out again? Are you going to come out on the road doing some music? I of course I, I have to. I've got a tour on a Boulevards of Splendor, and uh, I'm looking forward yes. to that. Yes, for sure. Well, we want to see you right here in Chicago, along with all the other places around the country. Absolutely. Thank you, Ron. Vinny, thank you, dear. Thank Carmine, you, all. Thank everyone. you, Katie. Katie. Thank, thank you. Katie. Thank you. Katie, Katie, Sherry. Nice to meet you. Well, make sure everybody, you you are sharing, you are liking, you're checking our podcast on Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio. We're all over the place, but make sure you let everyone know about Artists on Lockdown, hanging and banging each week here Thursday, right here with my brothers, Carmine and Vinny, a piece, apathy, I don't even know anymore. Have a great week. We'll see you next week on Artists on Lockdown, hanging and banging.